Hello everyone. Today's video we're going to talk about how to set up an automatic first logon for your Windows machines. This is a fairly advanced video so this stuff isn't for beginners. Now this applies only to in general virtual desktop environments or remote desktop session host environments. So if you're not working in a VDI or an RDSH environment then you probably don't need to watch this video. The video accompanies an article I wrote on my blog which is linked in the description below. So before we get started, why would we set up an automatic first logon for a machine in a VDI or a remote desktop session host environment? Well, if you work in these kinds of environments, you may have noticed when you boot your machines up, the very first logon onto a machine is always a bit slower than the second logon on the machine for some reason. So really we're looking at improving user logon times. And if I just switch across here to my Uber Agent instance where I've booted a machine up and then logged on to it twice, you will see you can say that the first logon here is substantially longer than the second logon. If you look down at the bottom here, first logon was nearly 63 seconds, second logon was 39 seconds. This isn't anything to do with a user profile because in between the logons onto these machines, I actually removed the user profile from that machine. So it had to load a new one fresh. So there is there a 23 second difference between the first logon and the second logon. So we're going to show you how you can use an auto logon to essentially get rid of that problematic first logon so that every logon is kind of like a second logon. I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So, how do we go about setting up an auto logon for all of our machines? First thing you need to do is you need to get the auto logon executable on all of your machines. So, go to one of your machines, open up the internet, and type in sysinfels auto logon, like it says there. Go to the auto logon site, click on download, it'll download it for you, and open that up. You'll see there's a couple of executables in here. You have a 32 bit one called auto logon, 64 bit one called auto logon 64. Grab a copy of the one that you need and copy it to somewhere in the system path. We're going to drop it in the system32 folder. And once it's on there, you need to make sure it's on all of your machines. So you could distribute it out using um, a group policy preference or something like that. You can copy it into your base image and do it from there. Whichever way you want, make sure it's on all of your machines so that we can use that executable, right? Next thing we need to do is we need to create a group policy shutdown script that basically allows us to set those auto logon settings so that they will then log on automatically. The reason we do this as a shutdown script is because a startup script doesn't do it in time to be processed. So basically we need to do it as a shutdown script. So when you restart the machine, it sets the auto logon as it shuts down. First of all, type in the name of the program into your script. So if you can spell it right, auto logon 64 if you're using the 64-bit version or just auto logon if you're using the 32-bit. Then you need to type in the username of the user you're going to use for your auto logon. We've already created one called auto logon which you can see here. It's not a member of anything apart from the domain users group so keep it simple for security purposes. So type in the name of the user. Next thing you need to type in is the domain name of the domain that that user is in. So I'll type that in there. Next thing is the password that's correct. And the final thing is slash accept EULA to stop it pausing when it runs for you to accept the end user license agreement. If you then go and save it, and if we go into, I'm going to stick mine in the sysball share, but just stick it somewhere that it can be accessed from all of your computers. So I'll put it in the scripts folder, and I switch that to all files, and we'll call it set auto logon.cmd we the ways to do that that is now saved and ready to go so the next thing we need to do is if we create a gpo here and let's just call this shutdown script dead symbol let's right click that gpo and edit it if we go into policies windows settings scripts shutdown then simply add and click browse and look for the script that we just saved, which is in the scripts folder. There it is, set auto logon, click OK, click OK. Obviously make sure it's linked to the OU that the computers are in that you're targeting. And there you go, that's bit done. The first part is done, we've set up the shutdown script that is ready to run to set those settings. So when the machine comes back up, it will have a username and password ready to log on with. Now what's the next stage? What we need to do next is 
When the machine boots up and that user logs in, we then need to log that user back out straight away. So first of all, the thing we need to do to achieve this is we need to set up a group policy object to change some registry permissions so it can actually remove the automatic logon details. So if you go back to your DC and your group policy management console and create a new GPO and call it something, change registry permissions. Right, grab this GPO, go to edit it. Then we go into, let's just expand this so we can see it a bit better. Computer configuration, policies, Windows settings, security settings, and registry. So in here, if we click add key, and we select HK Little Machine, software, Microsoft, scroll down to whoops windows nt current version and look for the key called win logon this is the key where the username goes for the default user set that and what you need to do is add the auto logon user again i really struggle with spelling auto logon add the auto logon user to this acl with full control privileges right do that on there click ok then select the options that say configure this key then propagate inheritable permissions to all sub keys click on ok there and that bit is done you now have set up the registry permissions so that you can write to this key right the next thing we need to do is we need to create another script so go and open up your notepad window or whatever you use to edit your scripts and you can either write this out in full or you can copy and paste it from the article that's linked. We need to do reg delete HKLM software Microsoft Windows NT current version win logon, delete the value of default username and also add a value for auto admin logon and change that to zero. This is documented on the blog so don't worry about that. Click on file, go to save as. Again, we'll put it in that scripts folder because it needs to go somewhere that's accessible from all your target devices. You could bake it into the image if you want to. And let's call this one clear auto logon.cmd and click on save. Right, so now what you need to do is this script that basically clears out that information that causes the auto logon we need to set this to run when that auto logon user logs in so the way that we do this is we actually need to create another gpo obviously you would load all these into a single gpo i'm just showing you how to do it in separate gpos to keep it you know sort of logical to show you create another gpo let's call this one scheduled task now let's edit this one what we need to do if you go into computer configuration and preferences and control panel settings you have an option for scheduled tasks if you right click in here choose new scheduled task at least windows 7 you must pick that option configure the new task set the action to replace give it a name auto logon removal you can put a description in as well right set the user account that it runs as so obviously it wants to run as the auto logon user because we're going to do it only when that user logs on so make sure that it's all selected run only when the user is logged on and configure it for windows 7 or higher you then need to switch across to the trigger tab create a new trigger and change this to oops not add start but change it to at logon and not for any user change it to a specific user or group and again select i still can't spell auto logon select the auto logon user james ranker auto logon only other setting you need there is the fact that it is enabled okay on that now the next thing you need to do is you need to set up an action that you need to do when that user logs on so we create new and choose start a program we can browse to that script which as you can tell i've been practicing with so we've already in the right directory select the one that says clear auto logon don't need any arguments to go with it or start in once that's done next thing you need to do is actually don't need to do anything more all the rest of the stuff you can leave as default click ok on there and it now has that auto logon removal in place so basically what's going to happen when this machine boots well, sorry when this machine is restarted as it shuts down the shutdown script sets the auto logon data in the registry 
As it comes up, it then logs on. Then when it logs on, because that user has logged on, a scheduled task starts, and then that removes the logon information and then calls log off. Remember the very last line of that um, scheduled task script was log off. So it'll log the user back out. So my spelling mistake, again, notwithstanding, that is all now set up and ready to go. So we can get ready to test it. So let's do the test. Let's switch back to the machine that we were working on. Obviously you would deploy this policy to all of your machines. Let's have a look at it here. We've just run a group policy update and we can see that shutdown script, change registry permissions and schedule tasks are now all applied to this machine, which is great. So let's just restart it. The machine is just about finished booting up now. There's a bit on the slow side starting up. As the group policy is applying, we should hopefully see it automatically log on. There you go. You can see the auto log on user is automatically logging in. Once it's finished logging in, it should then hopefully um, log back out again. There you can see there that it's actually removing the stuff that it put in for the auto log on. And now, barely before the log on's actually finished, it's starting to log back out again. And there it goes, it has oh, rebooted, logged in and logged back out. And now any log on to this machine after that time should be a second log on, not a first one. So let's just finish this off by looking at some statistics and apologies, it's actually getting a bit dark now. I'm not gonna bore you by sitting there and showing you a bunch of log ons over and over. Let's just jump straight across to Uber Agent and see what we've got. So if I switch to Use a log on duration and we then set up some filters on here and let's just go to a specified time range. I can get in there. Let's go to date and time range. So today from 16, I think it's about 16, 28. I started doing four log ons. Let's apply that and let's do filter by username and the username is it's like a type I said it is very dark let's just submit that query there so we're filtering it down to our test users so we don't get any admin logons which are obviously going to skew everything slightly let's just wait for our data to pop in there let's have a look at the results now and there you can see how much more uniform they are and look there all of them consistently between 21 and 26 seconds so it has evened off so nicely now why does this first logon uh, make a difference it's basically that things are getting loaded into memory but you can see right here that it's not just the first logon there's also the concept that the, the the machine is booted up properly and everything's kind of settled down once you get past that first logon as you can see originally we had a 60 second then a 39 once we set up that automatic logon and given it maybe a minute to settle down we're consistently under 30 seconds so really really good results there so there you go that's how using an automatic log on and log off can help you out in a windows virtual desktop or remote desktop session host environment and that's how you go and set it up that video accompanying the article that's linked in the linked in the description thanks very much for watching